everybody, this is Matthew Movies coming at you with my review of the 2014 movie X-Men Days of Future Past, a flick that I just love. I think this movie is freaking awesome. I don't think it's perfect. There are some things about it I would have changed, but I just absolutely love this movie overall. There are some moments in it that I really, really dig. There's some character that is just impressive. I, I'm just, I, I just love, love, love this movie, and I think it is one of the best comic book movies of all time, and I am shocked that there are so many people who don't love it as much as I do, because it's just so lovable in my view. <laughs> so, talking about the movie, the first thing that is, to me, most remarkable as a comic book fan was the choice of what they did with Shadowcat. I mean, the character that it was always the one that went forward in time in the X-Men Days of Future Past storyline, she was the character along with Wolverine that was most linked with it because when she goes in the future she hooks up with Wolverine, but to have her used the way that they did I thought was a major disappointment, one of the major things that I would knock against there because really throughout the entire film all she does is sit, sit there with her hands around Wolverine and then eventually somebody takes over for her depending on the cut that you're watching and I just thought that that was a massive disappointment first off. Second off, it, I was always very dubious on it because I don't ever remember her having any kind of time traveling abilities that was a whole thing for me. I mean, yeah, they go through a whole rigmarole to make it, try to make it make sense, but yeah, it didn't really necessarily work 100% with me. That being said, I will say Wolverine is awesome in this movie. With and when he gets sent back, I mean, yeah, he's got the zaps on each side of the head, but when he goes back in time, the way he interacts with everybody is perfect. I mean, the way he he kind of interacts with the young versions of some of the characters that he already knew is hilarious, and 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 it, just the fact that he brought this so much gravitas to it because you he. he he was the star of the X-Men movies up until recently. There's no doubt about it. So I do get why they did what they did. I do just wish they gave Shadowcat more to do if they were going to make that move. But I, I thought well, setting Wolverine back was awesome. And I mean, to me, one of the strongest elements of this movie by far was the relationship between Xavier and Magneto and that spans both the future time and the current time or past time I guess where like they're just their relationship is just such a fascinating part of these films and one of the few things they've gotten right in pretty much every single film even in X-Men or well sorry even in X-Men The Last Day and I got that wrong for half a second there uh, I thought they did a great job on their relationship and that's one of the few things I liked and I I thought that they did a phenomenal job here. I mean, the the mo fact that there was so much anger between the two of them at one point, be based on what he had done to him in, in the first class, and and then you see all the affection that they have for one another in the in the future, and then the, just the the way the whole thing plays out between the two of them, I just thought was magnificent. I also thought that the way they wrote Mystique in this was was really great because it was a great continuation of the character that we saw in the first film, the first class, where she had such an interesting character arc. I thought that this was very very well told continuation of that where you see her basically where she's becoming public enemy number one because of how she's been altered by what she what happened to her in first class and how she's come to see humanity and but at the same time they don't portray her as just like you know black and white evil character and that's one of, the, one of the major strengths of this series and I would say the same thing with the way they portray Magneto in this I just thought they did a great great job there I will say that you know I'm not I can't talk about every single mutant in this movie there are going to be some bigger ones that I don't touch on because I don't feel that they were as remarkable as the rest because this movie had a gigantic gigantic cast. Now, as far as the human characters go, the major one is Bolivar Trask, played by Peter Dinklage, and I was so excited to see Dinklage in this movie. I mean, he's just such a great, great actor, but I was disappointed by his character, because I didn't really feel like he had very much to do. I felt that they could have had any character actor in that role, and it would have been the same. I don't think that he, an actor of his caliber, was was used, utilized in, in the proper fashion, because he is such a talented, talented dude. That being said, I love the end results of this character. I love how they did the Sentinels in this movie. I loved how you see them at the first, and they're these big kind of plastic and chunky and just, you know, 70s looking kind of guy characters. They, they, they look like they would have been made in that generation. And I thought that was an awesome, awesome touch. And then when you see them in the future, how they're so, like, futuristic and they can basically change to fit any given situation. I thought that just the way in which they showed the 
uh, auspicious beginnings and the final result I thought was absolutely fantastic and and speaking of the future I thought one of the major strengths of this movie is the way in which they showed characters using their abilities there are characters in this movie that we saw in previous movies that I don't think were shown in even remotely close to a compelling fashion when it came to actually using their ability I thought Storm came off just like a total total badass during that fight sequence at the end like she really seemed like someone that you you'd have the reckoning come across you if you happen to get on her bad side I thought Iceman was freaking awesome I love the fact that they finally showed him do the ice slide I thought that was just so so cool and that was right at the beginning of the film just got me super super jazzed for what I was about to see it was awesome seeing Bishop I thought that they showed his abilities perfectly I mean I would have preferred it if they gave the, act the actor a little bit more to do if it was more of a fleshed out character but you know it is what it is and I, I thought that the way that they showed his abilities was awesome and Blink just blew me away I thought she was awesome I love the way that they showed the teleportation I thought they just the visual sense of what she could do was just simply phenomenal and uh, to a large degree I feel like that could have easily easily gone awry and to see that it didn't was just I, I was something I was overjoyed with and obviously I mean if you are a fan of this movie the character whose ability is the coolest by far was Quicksilver I mean that sequence where he's running around the room is just amazing I the first time I watched it when they, he didn't get on the plane with the rest of the guys I was so disappointed I do get it just from a practicality standpoint because they took so long to film that one sequence that was you know a minute or whatever it is so they can't keep shooting all of those sequences so I get it but I, I, I would have loved to have seen more of him but what they did show just the the way in which they showed him using his ability like messing with everybody you know I just I mean that was just phenomenal and just to touch on one final thing about this movie there is a rogue cut of this movie which I have seen which I thought was in interesting I thought that the sequences with Rogue were all well done and interesting but I do have to say I agree with them cutting her out of it because it really didn't add anything to the story it was very superfluous it was a cool action sequence in the middle of the, the, the more dramatic moments for sure but you know I, I don't think it was a necessary element by any stretch of the imagination and I don't really think it adds much to the movie at all it's cool I mean I, I you have the relationship with Rogue from the previous films so it's a bit of a kick in the pants that she's gone but from a story perspective perspective it makes perfect sense to me so those are my thoughts on x-men days of future past let me know in the comment section below what you think if you're a fan if you disagree with me if you think i'm crazy whatever other than that have yourself a good day after you hit like and share and you hit subscribe and notification bell have a good day